This week at the movies, J-Lo tries to revitalize the romantic comedy. It's the backup plan starring Jennifer Lopez, and one of us thinks it's pretty good. How we feel? We're freaking out! What she said. Also coming up this week... Jack. You people unjustly take away from me my liberty. Al Pacino plays Dr. Death in the new HBO film You Don't Know Jack. Will the losers kick off a new comic book franchise? Hit it. Plus, Chris Rock's latest, Creatures from the Deep, and a great new movie about an art world mystery. You're one of my best friends. Don't you want to help me? I mean, we don't have to have sex, all right? Just, will you be my baby daddy? You know, I just always thought I'd be married with kids by now, but I still haven't found the one. The elusive one. Good luck! Jennifer Lopez took some time off to start a family. Now she's back playing a single woman desperate to have a baby in The Backup Plan. I'm Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm A.O. Scott of the New York Times. In The Backup Plan, Jennifer Lopez stars as Zoe, a Manhattan pet shop owner who goes in for artificial insemination and is feeling pretty good about her pregnancy chances and the prospect of becoming a single mother. Then along comes a great guy, a cheesemaker no less, with his own farm upstate. And he likes to ride his tractor with his shirt off. Excellent! First date. Can you give me a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get good. <laughs> give me that. Give it to me. Zoe, everything okay? Uh, yeah. You know, just... Showing him who's the pack leader. That's Alex O'Laughlin as Prince Charming, or rather Farmer Charming. Zoe keeps news of her pregnancy a secret because it wouldn't be a rom-com without an absurdly delayed revelation of a major plot point. Here, ravenous Zoe gets a load of Stan's home cooking. Hot uh hum. Ah, would you like a plate? My guess is you've probably already made up your mind whether or not you're going to see the backup plan based on the cuteness of the people on the poster. Well, no argument there. It's the movie that sells everybody short. I say skip it. Indefensible film. No, well, I'll defend it. I, I think um, by the standards of Hollywood romantic comedy uh, these days, this is one that's worth seeing. The Partly standards because, down here, well, the standards granted, down here. but I have to say that the premise was novel enough that I found it sweet and charming. I actually like Jennifer Lopez. I think Jennifer Lopez is a really good and often underrated comic actress. I think she was good in The Wedding Planner and she was good in Made in Manhattan. And here she can be, you know, beautiful and sexy, but also kind of silly and scattered and flaky. I don't, and I, I don't disagree about her, her talents. I, I, think, I think if you were going to give this material a pass, though, Tony, I mean, this is not, granted, it's not as uh, ugly, spirited, or humiliating toward the female protagonist as the real bottom feeders like The Ugly Truth, Did You Hear About the Morgans, the worst of the worst. Yes, this, this gives the female lead a little more room to actually be herself, but my God, this, this material, the, the, I mean, there's a line in there where somebody says, you know, a year from now, this will all be a funny memory. And I just thought, no, no, you're, oh, you're, no, it I won't even be thought, a memory. It won't I even be a memory. I thought some of the comedy, I mean, granted, we're not working with, with groundbreaking the original stuff here, but there's a childbirth sequence that's quite hilarious. <laughs> oh, the, no, the, the, no. The, the first sex scene between the, the, the two um, romantic leads manages actually to be fairly hot and also very funny with a kind of a, a pregnancy punchline right at the end. Yeah. I thought actually that this movie was, was amusing and charming. I'm not going to say, you know, that, it, that it's, you know, it happened one night, but come on, for, for, for what we've been seeing and talking about and despairing over on this show for so many months, I can't this one's pretty I, good. I cannot grade it that much on a curve. I cannot. I say well, skip it. Oh, I say see it. Our next movie is a biopic about a colorful and controversial figure directed by Barry Levinson and starring Al Pacino. But in spite of this pedigree, you won't be able to see it at the local multiplex. Instead, you can and you should watch it on HBO starting this weekend. The movie's called You Don't Know Jack, as in Jack Kevorkian, the Michigan pathologist celebrated by some and reviled by others for helping hopelessly ill patients end their lives. The movie is sympathetic to Kevorkian, but it doesn't shy away from showing the abrasive side of his personality. I can't trust you. I can't trust you, you can't and I trust can't trust her. Either one of you, together, you don't make it easy for me. You're supposed to make it easy for me, but you don't. How dare you, Jack? How this for dare the last you? Time, I'm all telling my you, for life, the last time all my done. life, I've been making it easier for you. Yeah. All Make my life, do you hear me? Like That's this. Brenda Vaccaro as Jack's sister, Margot, part of a first-rate supporting right, cast that also includes right John Goodman, Susan Sarandon. I have my first patient. But what I don't have is a place. Yes. 
and you'd like to use my home. Well, if you're going to come to my home, you're going to have to dress more cheerfully. And Danny Houston, who plays Kevorkian's hardworking, grandstanding lawyer, Jeffrey Figer. You paid my bail? Yeah, I bailed you out. Let's go. What kind of lawyer does that? What's the matter with you, Jeff? Don't you see I'm denying myself nourishment? I'm, I'm, I'm starving to death for three days to make a point. You Don't Know Jack does turn didactic at the end, turning a very complicated character into a saintly crusader while caricaturing his opponents as self-righteous zealots. But the complexity is there in Pacino's performance. He suggests the tangle of Kevorkian's motives and emotions without quite letting you in. You Don't Know Jack might make you uncomfortable, and it probably won't change your mind on the issue of euthanasia, but you should by all means see it. Yes, I say see it. I think I liked it a little less than you did because the material for my money is about here and uh -huh. I think the acting is really quite a bit quite a bit better yeah uh, I have to say though it's heartening to see an actor like Pacino who is kind of floundering on the big screen projects um, HBO forces good actors yeah. to re-engage with their craft well, and, and, and gives them room to play really interesting unusual characters I mean this is not a standard you know movie guy it's not like an action hero or a cop or the, sure. the the kind of person that that Pacino would usually be playing these days um and you know we'll talk about Pacino in in a, a web exclusive that uh, people can look at but um I do think this is a wonderful showcase for him and also I, I think you know Barry Levinson um who has had his own you know not spectacular record of, of big right, screen projects right. recently this really, is his best know, uh, yeah, absolutely this is his this is Levinson's best work since Wag the Dog I would mm -hmm. say I think um you know, one thing that does hold this back and make it make it good but not great is what you said about uh, caricaturing and stereotyping the other side of this euthanasia argument. Because right. I, I, if you have two and a half hours, I really do feel that you can deal a little more with yes. true gray areas. And and uh, it, for my money, it's not quite enough to just. Uh, have other characters keep telling Jack Kevorkian, right. "You're an enigma. I don't, I don't. What's in your head? You know, what makes a doctor assist in this many suicides? Well, it's just I, a little, I, I, it's I a like little the less enigma than it part. It was, it was the sort of the white knight at the end part that that I could have done a little more. Yeah, good. That. Still, lot to wrestle with. Absolutely, and a good movie. <laughs> Coming up next, Zoe Saldana and a posse of brawling army special ops guys in The Losers. Yeah. So, speaking of Zoe Saldana, we'll take a look at a little right. film right. called right. Avatar and tell you if it's worth watching on the small screen. The theory calls me scoundrel. It means moron. What are you smiling at? <laughs> That's a badass chick. Okay, here's a film that just might be the start of a new action franchise. There are so many ways to kill off your brain cells. Exposure to pesticides, too many cocktails, lack of sleep, and watching the new movie, The Losers. I'm generally pro-brain cell, but certain films justify losing a few in the name of brainless fun. This is one of them. What's this comic book adaptation about? Explosions and rocket launchers and this sort of thing. I have a business proposition for you, Clay. Oops. Not your accident. Oops. I don't want to hurt you. You're not going to. Oh, yes, I am. Great thing about this fight scene is that there's absolutely no motivation or purpose for it. It just gives Zoe Saldana and Jeffrey Dean Morgan something to do before she tells him she's on his side and ready to help his team find the bad guy. Here in Miami, this B-team edition of the A-team finds a way to extradite the bad guy, played by Jason Patrick, without too much paperwork. Does that look like small arms to you? Huh? That's a cannon. Donut. He has a cannon down there. Donut, donut, donut. donut. Now, Tony, I know you go to comic book adaptations like the losers for the dialogue, so here's a sample. Take them. So it's insidiously slick as B grade movie making goes. And just because it's rated PG-13 doesn't mean it's not utterly sadistic in its appeal. But compared to the more controversial and self-serious comic book adaptations like V for Vendetta or Kick-Ass, I will take the losers any day. It sets out to prove nothing except that violence solves everything. Nevertheless, Tony, I'm saying see it, 
Preferably on, I'd say, four or five hours of sleep. That's the best way to yes, see well, it. Yes, well, we've had kick-ass. I could have called this movie Dumbass. But um, <laughs> I say see it anyway. I, no, I, I, all I, right. Well, because there's something about how it embraces its own dumbness <laughs> and does not ask you to believe that it's not trying to be clever and self-conscious the way that Kick-Ass is. It's not trying to be serious and allegorical the way that The Watchmen was. Right, right. It's just, it moves really fast. There's some <laughs> wonderful action. I mean, that, that fight sequence uh, that, that, you know, that you pointed to, that was like great foreplay between these two characters. <laughs> yeah, it's there's, even more fun because it's good... absolutely hanging out there for no purpose at all. Except, except Like most just... of the other stuff. Like, like you know, <laughs> why are they running around these shipping containers? Why are they dropping <laughs> magnets in the streets <laughs> of, of, of Miami? I don't know, but... Right. It moved quickly. It did not demand too much of me, no, and, no. and I had a good time. I mean, it's not great action filmmaking, but it's, it's, it's pretty good action filmmaking of a certain kind. And I got the same kind of uh, somewhat embarrassing cheap thrill as you know, I got out of From Paris with Love. Mm -hmm. And that, it's right on that level. And I actually like this one a little better. Did you? I, I just thought somehow that sort of the color and the texture and some of the supporting Columbus Short, Idris Elba, Jason Patrick. It was just, yeah. it, it was, it was comic booky enough that 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 I just enjoyed. That. Right. No, good. Take it on its own terms. It's right. fun. And coming up next, who is Banksy? Why does Chris Rock look so sad? And why are penguins so darn cute? We'll answer these questions in our look at movies now playing next week. The horror remake, A Nightmare on Elm Street, starring Jackie Earl Haley. Remember me, Catherine Keener, and Oliver Platt in Please Give. Plus, the most over and underrated horror films of all time. Next week at the movies. Who's this? You know, I asked myself the same thing when my dad passed. I said, who is this man? No, no, Brian. Who's this in the coffin? Because that's not my father. Are you sure? Look at the damn body, man. You got Jackie Chan in there. Let's take a look at some movies now playing in theaters. That was a scene from Death at a Funeral starring Chris Rock, Zoe Saldana, Tracy Morgan, and Martin Lawrence. Now, this is a, a remake um, of a movie that came out a very, very long time ago. I think. <laughs> Three years. <laughs> Three years. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> yeah, right. So this, this is the world's fastest remade film. Um, I, I like this new one mainly because of the cast. It's almost the same, for me, the same circumstance as the Steve Carell, Tina uh -huh. Fey movie, Date Night. I think a, a you know, routine material basically saved by a really good ensemble cast. So your vote is what? I say see it. I, I'm a rented for the same reason that I was on, on Date Night. I like the cast. Um, they're yeah. really funny. Uh, you know, certainly it was nice to see Martin Lawrence Again, James Marsden is quite good. Danny Glover steals a few scenes, but the material just wasn't quite, quite yeah, it's good. Broad. It's broad farce. It's not any broader than the British original, actually. No, I'd, I'd rent that, too. Okay. Also in theaters now is the Disney documentary, Oceans. They still fly gracefully through the freezing waters. Though as figure skaters, they leave something to be desired. Now, Tony, this follows in the success of Disney's Earth, and this comes from the directors of a documentary called Winged Migration. And I have to say, despite the English language version of the narration, which is read by Pierce Brosnan in a very sort of falsely poetic tone, yes. and there's a lot more fake poetry than actual real information about what you're, what sort of species of fish or where even where you are geographically uh, in the water at any given point, this movie just visually is quite seductive. <laughs> it's, oh, it's amazing. They're just some incredible creatures, and, and you sort of look and you think, wow, you yeah. know, how, do, how did they do that? No. Definitely, definitely no, see it. it. It's a See it. And another very different kind of documentary that's now out in limited release is Exit Through the Gift Shop. This hybrid form of graffiti was driven by a new generation using stickers, stencils, posters and sculptures to make their mark by any means necessary. Now, this is uh, directed by and largely about the, the graffiti street artist um, Banksy, a very mysterious um, British fellow. And it's sort of a documentary about street artists, sort of a documentary about a guy making a documentary about street artists who then becomes a street artist in his own right but it may also just be all a kind of a a, complete an art project in its own way. No, right. no, and that sounds completely confusing and vexing, but the way this film plays out, Tony, I, I, I think it's truly the film of the week for me. I, I think uh, it, it asks all kind of great questions about, um, you know, what, what really makes a media sensation right. in the art world? Is there any, is talent involved, you know, to any degree sometimes? Well, and it shows and, you some amazing art being made when it, when it follows some of these people out, you know, at night, running away from the yes. cops, putting up these 
silk screens and these and these graffiti installations. Yes. Pretty great. And stuff. this question about whether or not it's even a hoax, if what you see in the film can be believed, that doesn't really even weaken the mysteriousness of the film. It sort of strengthens it's it. A it's a fascinating movie. Film. I think I think we agree that people should see it. See it. And coming up next, an Oscar winner, a 16-time Oscar nominee, and the highest grossing movie of all time. All out now on DVD. Follow me! I was a stone-cold aerial hunter. Death from above. Only problem is, you're not the only one. Okay, time now to take a look at DVDs out now. That was a scene from Avatar. Have you heard of Avatar? It's a very uh, good Avatar, film. a little independent yes, film. Yes, all. Now, film. The interesting thing here is that most, a lot of people who have seen this on the big screen have seen it in 3D. Right. Um, it is released now in, in DVD and on, on Blu-ray, not in 3D and without any extras at all. In, None. In the package. So this is so, the big question for consumers now. Right. Is it worth, the, does the magic of the thing visually hold up on the home screen? I have to say, on the screen I saw, which is a good size screen, yeah. Uh, the magic really is there, especially in Blu-ray, and you know a little less so in the conventional DVD yeah. format. Um, but, but but you need a big screen. I mean, I, I think you know doing the experiment of, of sort of looking at it on a very large screen and then on a on a smaller screen, it loses a lot every time you go down in yes, scale. Yes, I mean, on the on the iPod, it would look like a bunch of little blue insects, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of running around. Yeah. Because and what works on on especially the the, the Blu-ray on a bigger screen is what was the key to the experience in the theater which is that sense of immersion somehow when you're looking at it and watching this thing in a proscenium frame in a way you, all the kind of nagging story issues I had with that picture in the second half which yes. were you know uh, look even people who love this film don't right. love the second half like they love the first half right I, I think it just becomes you know this is really something that was meant to be you know experienced in the largest yes. way possible because well, you hear like phrases like flux vortex which sound great somehow in the theater <laughs> sound silly in your living room <laughs> even if you have your own flux vortex also new on DVD is Crazy Heart, starring this year's Oscar winner, Jeff Bridges. Ain't no place for the weary kind. You know that song? Mm hmm? I can't remember who did it. That's the way it is with good ones. I'm sure you've heard them before. Tony, some films need to be seen on the large screen of the IMAX. Crazy Heart, not one of those films. I think right. it holds up just fine on the on the home viewing experience. It was, was going to go straight to television, but it's such a such a great performance um, from Jeff Bridges. Very and good. And Maggie really Gyllenhaal good too. too. Maggie Gyllenhaal too. Yeah, Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Also out now, it's complicated. Starring Meryl Streep, Steve Martin, and Alec Baldwin. You look good, Janie. Yeah. You do. You always do. Your hair's shorter. Longer. I like it. This is a film we both liked. I have heard a lot of grousey sort of, well, I really Because the people was... had too much money and too nice houses and, and, and were too sort of spoiled yes. by their Yes, there's the central question, I think, of why Meryl Streep needs to redo this fantastic kitchen uh, into a yes. more fantastic kitchen. But it's really fun to watch the performers, not just the yeah. main three, but, you know, John Krasinski's in there. Um, and it, it's just, I found it a charming and delightful movie. I'd gladly watch yeah, it again. Yeah. I, think that, I think the cast lifts yes. it up. Okay, so Avatar, It's Complicated, and Crazy Heart are all available on DVD and Blu-ray now. And coming up next, lots of good stuff opening in theaters this week. I'll tell you which films you can't miss in my three to see. Closed captioning for At The Movies is sponsored by... Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award-winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile on Water Tower Square. It's a good thing this isn't Tony's week to do 3 to see because he'd tell you to see the backup plan. But it's time for my 3 to see, and I'm a little surprised myself, but my number three pick is The Losers, which is a diverting brain cell killer and certainly better B-movie entertainment than Kick-Ass, that other new comic book adaptation now playing in theaters. At number two is Oceans, a dramatic eyeful of a documentary from Disney Nature by the directors of Winged Migration. This takes you around the world under the sea, and it is pretty spectacular. And number one, Exit Through the Gift Shop, a fascinating documentary about a second-rate painter who became a hot commodity through a series of bizarre events caught on videotape. This might be a complete hoax, might be a partial hoax, 
It's certainly a riddle that keeps on giving. This one, I, I think, is, is one of the greatest brain teasers yeah, of, well, of the I, year. Yeah, well, I, I want to see it again. because, And I love movies that, that go into these deep and complicated ideas. What is art? You know, what is, what is celebrity? What is truth? And do it in this really entertaining, lively, and, and funny with way. With a sense of humor, exactly. Yeah, that's yes. great. That's it for now. We'll leave you with a recap of this week's show. And now you can join the discussion by following us on Facebook and on Twitter. Just go to atthemoviestv.com to find out how. Join us next week for reviews of the horror remake A Nightmare on Elm Street. And until then, we'll be at the movies.